is actually called the ecclesia. It's not a building. When people say, hey, I'm going to go to church, they think, okay, I'm going to go to church, and they think of building. Some people think of a church as an institution, and in some places, <clears throat> it is an institution. But the Bible calls the church the ecclesia. It's, it's a meeting place with God. It's, uh, it's God's kingdom. If you're... Um, some of our friends and family, you know, they're, they're flying out tonight, different people going to different parts of the world. And when they go to other parts of the world, they're in that country, but they're not from there. They're from, you know, the United States. And if anything ever happens, they go to the U.S. Embassy, where the laws from our country govern that little postage stamp or one acre of land. And so here, we're all here Faith Church at all of our campuses tonight, Florida and here. We're here, but we're really not from here. We're from a kingdom where our father is the king, and he governs with kingdom rules and kingdom culture. And so you learn about the culture of the kingdom, and maybe you're new to this whole Jesus thing or a church thing, and, and it's not just a church building. The church is a force. The Bible said, I'm coming back for a glorious church. It doesn't mean... They're, uh, you know, uh, in, in rural Palm, that they're coming back for that building, as pretty as it is. And I love that campus, so pretty. If you've never been to rural, rural, raise your hand if you've never been to the rural Palm campus. Let me tell you, it is incredible, because you can call God there, and it's not long distance. It's direct, because he lives <laughs> right there. And, uh, and the sun sets over the lake there, and we got the tennis courts and the ball fields in the back. It, it's amazing. And as neat as that piece of property is, God's not coming back after a building. He's coming back. When he says church, he means People. What is church? Church is people. You know, anybody ever seen this little awesome trick right here? Come on, raise your hand if you've seen a little trick. So you go with me on this. So here's the church, right? Here's the what? Open the door and here's all. Notice our church got some fire. Our people shouting and dancing and moving, right? These people, these people got it going on. So the church is people. It's you. The most valuable thing we have at all of our churches is the people. Amen. When I think about, you know, Greg Crane, I watched him tonight over there with his wife and got their hands raised and they're worshiping God. And I knew, I just knew tonight Greg was going to be here. I just know there in Florida that the DeMonts are there. I can't even see them, but I know right now they're there in that back corner on the far left. I know that I can just sit there and know that Rich is sitting there. I know, I know all the people, Cynthia Mandel, I can just call them out. It's like I got, I got these people that you don't know here. I got a whole other family in all these different buildings, people that you don't know. You're in Walmart sometimes, and you're in line with people, and you don't even know you go to the same church. And that's why I think you ought to wear the faith church gear so we know who to stick together. You got, I'm in trouble. Okay, I'm right here. Come on, somebody. If you fight one of us, you got to fight the whole trailer park. Can I get an Amen. So people are important. So if, if the church is people, then we, and we're people, the good news is the Bible said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And that's not a building, that's the people. And guess what? You people. We are the people. So we ought to do life together. We ought to swim together. We ought to bowl together. We ought to, we bowled today, and I don't want to brag, but I must say I killed it today. Come on, somebody. I was just... I had just, you know, I was in rare form. I don't know what happened to me. It's like, man, it's incredible. And something's about sticking your fingers in these three nasty holes and then eating finger food. I am vaccinated now as well. I can't, no disease ever hit me with all the crap I touched today. But we ought to bowl together. We ought to knit together. We ought to, everything we do, we ought to do it together. This is called groups because we're the church. Now, here's the number one thing that the enemy tries to get you to do. He tries to get you offended at each other. Jesus said it's impossible that offenses come, but whoa, whoa, like a horse, whoa, whoa to whom they come. So somebody's going to do something to you at the church, and it's going to hurt your feelings. Have you ever been hurt by church people? Well, church people go to Target, too. And, well, they used to. And they go to Walmart, and they go to all these other people. I mean, church people, church people go to Starbucks, church people are everywhere. So people are the same way. I, I think it should be a song. They're, they're the same way wherever you go. There's good and bad in everyone. I'm going to write that down. But the enemy will try to get you offended at the church, not at the building, at people at the church. 
So we have to mature in grace and realize, hey, somebody's going to say something that makes you mad. Somebody's going to say something that's offended. Somebody's going to, and that's why you got to be really careful. This is deep teaching, by the way. How, how do you stay connected to the church that you're called to? And I want you to write that down. There's a church where you're called to. You can't just go to any church. There's a lot of great churches. You can name them here in this town. I'm saying there's great churches. There's, there's Grace Church. You've got Twin Rivers Church. You've got the Catholic Church. You've got the, there's all kinds of churches. And no matter what church you go to, if it's the one God called you to, you'll be blessed there. But if you leave a church because it's boring, it's too wild, people say this. I, need, I heard this recently. Somebody left the church. I've heard it my whole life. You probably heard this too. I need to go somewhere deeper. Anybody ever heard that? I need to go deeper. Uh, I, I'm not getting fed here. Anybody ever heard this? I'm just not getting fed here. And then when you dig down, somebody slept with somebody that they knew and it upset them and they were accused of something and now they left. So it had nothing to do with me. So now when people say it needs to be deeper, I go, somebody did something somebody shouldn't do and I'm getting blamed for it right here. Because you can't get any deeper than what I'm preaching right now. It's the Bible. Somebody else, you ain't getting no deeper than the Bible from Revelations 1 to Revelation, from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 and 20. It's just all Bible. So, you need to get in a church where God called you. Now, here's what happens. The guy, I'm so sorry, I forget your name, but you know, the motorcycle guy, Steve. So, Steve, stand up, Steve, so everybody can see you. Wave, Steve, so everybody knows the line. Florida won't know Steve, very attractive man sitting over there. <laughs> years ago, I had a motorcycle for sale, and this must have been, what, 10 years, 15 years ago? How many? 15 years ago, I put a motorcycle for sale on, on, I don't even know, they didn't have a Craigslist back then. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> motorcycle trader. And some guy calls and he wants to buy the motorcycle. He came and looked at it and he drove it around the driveway and he said, I want it. And I said, I'm not going to sell it. <laughs> I just felt a check in my spirit. He said, what? He said, not for sale. Took it off the market. A couple, three weeks later, I put it up for sale. Again. <laughs> And Steve, I never met Steve in my life. Steve calls, says, I want the bike. Steve shows up, and he, as soon as he sees me, he opens the door and says, I watch you on TV all the time. And starts kind of crying and talking about his life and how he wanted to get right. His dad was saved or something. I remember the story. has been a long time ago. But he needed to get back right with Jesus. And so he gets right with Jesus. Then I said, do you want to see the motorcycle? We go out and look at the motorcycle. He buys the motorcycle. I asked him when I saw him down, I said, you still got that motorcycle? He said, oh, yeah, I love that motorcycle. I rode it today. So I, the Holy Ghost checked me not to sell it to that guy, took a desire off my heart so that Steve would come. You see what I'm saying right now? Then Steve would come, give his life to Jesus. He still got the motorcycle, and I still got Steve. I can drive the motorcycle tonight if I want it. <laughs> if I'd have sold it to the other guy, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Raise your hand if you understand what I'm saying. So Steve can't go to just any church he wants. <laughs> Y'all are laughing. I was serious. You can't. You can't. I can't. What if I said today, I'm going to go over to this church or that church. How many of y'all would be expecting to see my backside at this church? You're like, what are you doing? You can't go to another church. Well, I'm offended. I got offended at faith church. There's several people that offended me at this church over the years. I got offended all the time. You say, well, you can't be offended. You're the pastor. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> but I can't leave because I'm offended. Why? I'm called here. This is where I'm supposed to be. So I have to get glad in the same panties I got mad in. Somebody ought to help me right So what's good for the goose? Somebody ought to see what I'm saying right now. But the devil will try to get you out of the church. So if we're going to be in groups, and we should be, Somebody's going to look at somebody's wife because the lust of the flesh or the pride of life, that's wrong. Deal with one another, but you got to get over it. 
somebody's going to go, hey, Pastor David, I got a good idea. I think that what we ought to do is we ought to start a web page for Faith Church, and it shows all the businesses so we can all, you know, do business together. And the plumbers can plumb, and the electricians can electrician, and they can all do their things. And then all the money that we make, it all goes back to the tithe. And here's the reason why we won't want to do that. Because some electrician and some plumber is going to screw somebody over, and then they're going to look at us and say, I don't want to go to that church anymore. Why? Because that guy told me that he wired my shorts and he didn't. Come on, raise your hand if it makes sense. We're not here to serve each other as business. We're here to serve God and love one another and, and mitigate as much risk for offense as we can. Florida, our, our PC ought to make some noise. Have wave at me. Come on, Ferguson. The church. Acts, put up that slide I made, Acts 2, if you would be so kind. Let's read this together. Those who believed, we can underline that first thing, believed. How many of y'all went to church, got saved, do you believe? And were baptized, so we believe in water baptism. And, and they added to the church, and they joined with other believers and committed themselves to the apostles and teaching. That's what you're doing tonight. And to the fellowship. What, so we're, supposed to, we're supposed to eat together. How many of y'all are good with that? We're supposed to eat together, bowl together, shop together, hang together, fix car brakes together. We're supposed to do it all together. And then what did they do? They worship together regularly at the temple courts. And they met in small groups in homes for communion. And I love this part right here. It's a word from the Lord. And shared meals together. With great joy and thankfulness. So we see that once you believe, then you get baptized, then you're added to the church, then you join with other believers, then you commit yourself to the teachings, then you fellowship together, then you worship regularly together, and, and then you meet in small groups together, you have communion and meals together. This is called the ecclesia, the body of Christ. And so we're supposed to do life together. Now you got some people who go, just bless me, feed me, help me. I come to the church, I watch you online, occasionally I come out and I sneak in and I sneak out as quick as I can. Don't want to meet anybody. These are people that, you know, I, I don't want to, want to commit to that. I don't, want to, I don't want to have community together. You'll be missing out on some of the coolest times of your life if you don't do life with the people of the church. Now, they're, they're going to do things that hurt your feelings, but you just need to be committed. In fact, if you're not committed... Chances are, you could be committed. <laughs> and by the way, go to a church that speaks to you. I mean, this church speaks to you, and my style speaks to you. I mean, you don't love everything about me, but they're more, than, more good than bad. Raise your hand. He's like, okay. for the most part, you, okay, I got it. But you're learning here because the Bible said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger that I follow. So if, if I'm speaking to you and you go, oh, you know what, I got mad, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go over there. Or my kids want me to go over here. Or my grandkids want me to go over here. Or my wife wants me to go over here. Or my dad wants me to go over here. Or my dog wants me to go over here. You can't go nowhere unless the Lord told you that that's where you need to go. Because there will be a trial that comes. I'm not praying this over people, but how many of you have had some things in life unexpected that hit you? So I see people all the time. They're like, oh, my God, I got cancer. And the first place they come, back to church. And they used to go to the church that believes in healing. They're like, oh, man, I went to that church, but they don't believe in healing. I want to go back to my church. Well, the problem is you got stage four cancer, and you got three months to live, and now we're trying to build, listen to me, we're trying to build your house in a storm. It's a whole lot easier to build your house when it's not storming. Raise your hand if this makes sense. So, so now you want to get into it. Well, God will have mercy on you. There's no doubt. But you need to be where God called you to be. So I'm, gonna, I, it's not, I'm not talking because I don't have anything to say. I'm, I'm letting that just sit for a minute. You can't ever leave a church because you're offended. Just can't. You got to leave when the offense is long gone. You say, who are you talking to? I don't know. I like to address things before we need to address them. Then it doesn't cause a big fight. And it'll save your life. 
So we saw that, what, 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 what I just put up a moment ago, the scripture, what it said that a church looked like. Now, 1 Timothy 3.15, let's put that up there. The family is the church of the living God, the support foundation of the truth. The family is the church of the living God. So a, a church isn't a building, a church is a family. So we're family. And I look all over the crowd here and all the different campuses, and I see all kinds of people that I've known for a long time, and we've developed. I, I'm not just a pastor to you. I love you, dearly love you, care about you, sincerely. I look over here, I see this, this a blonde lady over there that I just met on Sunday. Like it's the first time being at church in a long time, right? Is that what you told me? You had been at church in like a long time or something like that? She'd never been here or never church. Never been here. So I met her on Sunday. Saw her over there, and uh, she said something to that effect. It was really loud, and I couldn't exactly tell what was happening, and her hair was so flat-ironed beautifully, I was just impressed by, wow, what beautiful flat-ironed hair. You asked me how I know that. I live in a house full of women. I know about flat-ironed hair. Come on, somebody ought to help me. I know about tweezers and eyelashes. Somebody ought to tell me right now. I know if there's like eyelashes laying on the sink, don't mess with them. They're there for a purpose. They laid those there for later. Come on. If you see an eyelash in a car, don't throw it away. They're going to put that back on. So guys don't know this stuff. Raise your hand, girls. If, I, if you got a man knows to talk about it, that's an eyelash. You're like, that looks like a hair. That's an eyelash. That's my wife's eyelash. That's my daughter's eyelash. That's my daughter-in-law's eyelash. Don't mess with that. <laughs> so new people come in. What we, should we do to new people? We should welcome them in the family. We shouldn't do that. I'll tell you, they dress different than me. I have been to church. No, 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 no. I love it. I like a church. It happened to me last Tuesday night when I was preaching in Florida. Some, some guy came up and hugged me, and he, 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 he obviously had been drinking. His, his breath just was unbelievable. He, he was just still drunk, but he loved the service. And I smelt his breath, and I went, I love this church. I like a church where people have been drinking. I like a church where people have been smoking. I like a church where people have been drugging and sit them right next to a person that's oh God we love you oh Lord we praise you oh yeah and this guy grabbed me and said oh I needed this church you have no idea how bad I needed that word remember last season oh I needed it and I was like man so he probably was in a lot of pain and needed to mask the pain by just like man I need to take the edge off of this problem Raise your hand if you understand what I'm saying. So, so a church should have, a church is a family. If a church is a family, then <laughs> Paris, I don't know if Paris is here or not right now. Paris, Paris here? Run here, Paris, real quick. Run up real quick. I want to show off your sexy legs. Just run, son. Run. run. So Paris, Paris, um, he told me, he, he went to Six Flags. Him and Ashley went to Six Flags for a little bit last night. And he told me, he said, man, Six Flags, he said, I only rode two rides. And my head started hurting. And then we ate a hot dog. And he said, when I was a little kid, I, I loved Six Flags. I thought I was going to go all day, every day. And he said, Six Flags isn't no fun anymore. I said, you're getting old, Paris. How many of y'all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Remember when Six Flags like, I'm going to go every day. Raise your hand. I'm going every day. And now how many like me, you wouldn't go if they paid you to go. Raise your hand. I ain't going to Six Flags. So a church ought to have... Church ought to have, if to be a good church, you need, some, you need grandma and grandpa. You need mom and dads. And, and, and you need young people and you need little babies. You need toddlers. So we need, by that what I mean is we need people that come to our church that are still messing their pants. So we can help change them. So we, we change them so they come in drunk or hurting and we need to be like, come on in here, come on in. And we treat people right even if they're not right, and it encourages them to get right. Somebody, ought to, that's the kind of church I want to build. A church that's a family. A church that does life together. That's the church that Jesus is coming back for. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the door, and look at all the friendly people. They're hugging each other. They're loving each other. They're not loaning money to each other. They're not renting houses to each other. They're not sleeping with each other. They're not taking advantage of each other. They just say, hey, church is church. 
And business is business. And if that sometimes slides into business, then oh, so be it. But we use wisdom because we go, I don't want to mess up the family. It would look like this. How many of y'all got family that you love, but you don't dare loan them money? Raise your hand. If you don't raise your hand, I'm assuming you're the person that <laughs> needs a loan. How many got some family that you have loaned money to, but you knew in your head, in your spirit, you just gave it to them because you know, I am never getting this 20 back. Raise your hand. You're like, cash app ain't ever happening. Buy 20. Because they were family. You had mercy on them, but you knew you didn't want to mess up family. So the church should be that. It should be we're family. So business is business, church is church. We gotta be passionate and wise about church. Matthew 16, verse 18, and it said, this is Jesus speaking. He said, and also I say unto them, thou art Peter, Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Read it with me, class. What's it say? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. Now, for, let's back down to verse 13 so we put it in context. It says, now, when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I am, the son of man? And some say that you are John the Baptist. Some say you're Elias. Some Jeremiah. Some say you're one of the prophets. And Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said to him, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. So the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Peter gets this revelation that the church is the rock or the foundation. And remember I told you a moment ago in, in, in 1 Timothy 3 where I said uh, the, the, that the family is the church, the living God. It's the support system or the foundation. We have a pool in Florida, and we're near the sand, and there's a Bible verse on this. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the foolish man built his house upon the sand. So some fool built our pool on the sand <laughs> when we bought it, and he didn't put in the right stuff to support it, and so it sunk. And so now we got a pool. Now we actually have a hole in the backyard with no water in it. And we got to rebuild that thing and get the support system there because the water couldn't hold the pressure and the weight because it didn't have a... Christ is the firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Remember this song? So we got to have a firm foundation, and the firm foundation is Jesus, of course, and the revelation that he is the rock. So what the church is not is a political party. And the church has been divided... Now, at large, by an elephant and a donkey. So you got half the church is elephant people and half the church is donkey people, but all the church should be the lion of the tribe of Judah people. Come on, somebody. Our, our kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. Our Father controls and rules our governance, which is the church. Somebody ought to shout amen. Because there's coming a day where they're going to come to us, if things keep going the way they are, and they're going to say, if you preach from that Bible, you will be. I have friends that are in jail now in different countries, like in Canada, for preaching with the Bible. You say that'll never happen in America. Watch me. Prophetically, I speak it to you. Not from God. I just got good sense. They are going to say it's a book full of hate and a book full of judgment, but it is the book that Jesus wrote. It is the foundation of our principles of our faith. Somebody ought to shout amen. I feel a little political tension, and you're welcome to find a different church because I can't get ticklish on this one. There's one book, and it is the Bible, and it's right. And there's one God, and his name is Jesus, and he is right. There's not many ways to heaven. He said, I am the way. The the truth and the light. Somebody ought to give God praise because I, someday they'll cart me out of here. I'll say, hey, I'll see you. And then you guys will have to get, give me the offering to get me out of jail. 
But what we're not gonna do is go down and succumb to a political party or jurisdiction of the world. We got to preach the good news of the gospel until Jesus splits the eastern sky and comes back riding on a white horse with, a, with the word of God, the Bible coming out of his I wish I had a church tonight to preach to. Jesus is coming back. I said Jesus is coming back and he's coming back soon. And he's coming back for a glorious church. I give you 10 seconds to praise you. Lord, we praise you. We can't wait to see you. I, I can't wait to see that bloody vest come back. The lion of the tribe of Judah is coming back. It's coming back. Wow. Oh, yeah. I know it's nine in Florida, but it's only eight here. Ephesians 4, verse 11. He is the one who gave these gifts to the church. Church. He gave gifts to the what? Church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastor, and the teacher. That's the five-fold ministry gifts of the church. Their responsibility is to equip God's people, not you, to do his what did that say? Work. work. I don't want to work. <laughs> the church knows Rihanna up in here. That work, 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 work. You don't want to work, 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 work. Four letter words at church. Come on, man. To equip God's people to do the work and build up the what? Shout it again. What? The what? the body of Christ, the church. So when we come here teaching like this tonight, you're getting equipped to do the work of the ministry. Working in the port. Hey, remember the video this week? Ain't no portico. <laughs> Got the nursery, kids ministry, parking lot people, TV people, audio people, at all the campuses right now, they're teaching the kids, and you know, down there in Florida, on, on their, their auditorium for the kids, it's just, just all over, they're just these people serving everywhere. What are they doing? Work. They didn't even come to church tonight to get blessed. They came to work. But then as a result, God blesses them. So at some point, all you guys, everybody, look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you right now. Your family, look at them and say, we're family. We're family. So now look back at them and say, you got to help clean up too. <laughs> so if we're all living in the house, come on, go with me on this. How many of y'all hate it when, when you, you make dinner and, and you, you do all the work and you, you mess up all the dishes and you, you cooked all the food and everybody sit down and ate and then everybody got up and they walked over to the couch and sat down. And who am I talking to right now? And they left you to do the dishes. Raise your hand, whoever you are. Some of you are afraid to raise your hand, but I got other people standing up like, go get them right now. I'll tell you right now. It's Bob. But one of the preachers earlier, Juan or, or Austin, one of them said, many hands make what? Light work. So if everybody does what they're called to do, then it's easy. We can take up all the chairs and stack them up in the corner if we were all here and lickety split. But if we just leave it to Pastor Mark, he'll be the only one blessed with weight loss. <laughs> Which, by the way, he looks phenomenal. I don't even know where he's at. But I saw him today. I'm like, my God, lay hands on me, man. I told him to cast the fat devil and the sugar devil out of me. And he laid hands on me. And all of a sudden, I said, if you give me a cookie, I'll come out. <laughs> I'm almost done. But you need to do the work of the ministry. So if you're not serving, you're swerving. So you need to get in the church. You need to come to the house. And your job is to vacuum. Your job is to do the dishes. Your job is to cook the food. Everybody has a job to do. Who said so? Jesus, right here. We just read it. I'll read it one more time. He is the one who gave the gifts to the church, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So that, that, that'd be me right now telling you 
for their responsibility. Responsibility, I don't want responsibility. It's equipping God's people to do the work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. Until we come to such unity in the faith and the knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature and full-grown, mature and full-grown. I want to shout that one more time. Mature and full-grown. So, so it, at some point, and I'll, I'll quit. I have so many more notes. I, I have, by the way, I have all that. But no, yeah, you like preach it. You don't have a job. There's people here that have a job. No, just kidding. <laughs> this guy is independently wealthy, but I want to. I want to come back. The guy who actually built this church, Rick Shelton, he told me a long time ago. He's when I first started. He said, "Give people a lick of the ice cream cone and make them want to come back." Don't feed them the whole ice cream. You'll make them sick. They can't eat that much ice cream. That means don't preach too long. And then David Blunt, the guy I told you about a while ago, when I first started, he came to me and he said, remember this, the shorter the sermon, the bigger the church. The shorter the sermon, the bigger the church. He said it like 10 times. The shorter the sermon, the bigger the church. Your dad preached too long. You got about 30 minutes to hold people's attention if you're good. The shorter the sermon, the bigger the church. <clears throat> so anyway, that's why you're only going to get a little bit here tonight. So how many of y'all get it that this is the church and church is made up of people? How many of y'all get it that if the church is family, then family has to be careful how they treat one another or somebody's going to get mad and they're not coming to the family reunion and somebody's mad. Raise your hand if you got that part. And then the other part is if we're going to all eat together, and that's what we did tonight at all the campuses, then somebody has to do, somebody's got to lock it up, somebody's got to clean it up. You can't go, I'm out. Hate to eat and run. No, you don't. You liar. You love eating and running. You've been reading and running your whole life. You need to eat and clean up. Clean up, clean up. Clean up, clean up. <laughs> okay. Stand up with me. It'll encourage me to stop. Okay, so here are a couple questions. Ferguson. When Jesus comes back, and he's coming back soon, we don't know. He said, when's he coming back? Don't know. But I know it's way sooner now than it was a few years back. How many of y'all think that he's probably coming back pretty soon? So when Jesus comes back, he said, he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Okay. Shout that with me. Sheeps and goats. So if you're not careful... Sometimes goats can get in the sheepfold and you'll mistake them for sheep. But how do you know if it's a sheep and how do you know if it's a goat? A goat is always saying, but, 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 and they're always using their horse and they're butting up to stuff. And sheep, the Bible said that we're sheep of his pasture. But if you study sheep, it's unfortunate that Jesus called a sheep. By the way, I'm a sheep. But he said that he said that sheep are stupid. They're easily distracted. And you've got to watch out. That's why David had the shepherd's hook. He's like, don't, don't, don't you go out there. Don't you go out there. A bear will get you. You can't go out there alone. Get over here. And there'll be a goat like, come over here. There's a hole in the fence. And there comes a dumb sheep. And all of a sudden they get eat up by the, by the bears. So if Jesus is going to separate the sheep from the goats, then if you're a wise sheep, you hear information like this, then you yourself can separate sheep from goats. Don't hang out with goats. Goats are people who go, but it's not deep enough. But it's too long. But I didn't like that. But I don't want to serve. But, but. You stay away from goats. Because if you hang out with goats, you can get in trouble. Be a sheep. Be sheep of his pasture. The Lord said it, just believe it. No, I'm a sheep. I'm, people say, you're gullible. No, I'm not gullible. I'm a sheep. But sheep, have you ever seen the fainting sheep? Anybody ever seen this thing? The fainting sheep? You come up, and my neighbor, we lived at Robertsburg one time. You could go up and do that, and they would scare them, and they would just faint. Just f- How many of y'all have never seen fainting sheep? You never seen? Google it tonight. Go home. I'm not lying to you. Google it. Fainting sheep. It's the funniest thing in the world. You just make a loud noise. Ah! And they, they just... Their mechanism is to freak out and act dead. Oh, trouble. (laughs) Fainting sheep. So those are dumb sheep and scared sheep. I'm not saying, I'm just saying what the Bible said. 
but he called us sheep of his pasture. I'm like, I love it. I love being a sheep. But the Lord's like, hey, it's not really, not really, you know, necessarily a proud thing to be, but you're sheep. So be a sheep and always err on the side of going, my priority is God, the house of God, and I don't go to come to church for anything except to worship God and to be with my family. And if nothing benefits me, it doesn't matter. Even if I'm not eating, I'm going to clean up. Because remember, in Ephesians, it also said that Jesus is the head of the church. It said he's the chief shepherd. Shepherd of what? Shepherd of sheep. Sheep. A lot of great sheep at our church. And we want to be sheep of his pasture. And when the Lord comes back, the greatest thing you could possibly do is just give your life to Jesus, go to church, and do right. I watch people try to take shortcuts, screw up their whole lives, mess up their whole marriage. Don't do it. The greatest thing you can do with your life is spend it serving Jesus, going to church, and loving your family. It's just the, the, the gambling, the partying, the drinking, the drugging. It's not worth it. Raise your hand if that's your testimony to you. Like, hey, that's good advice. That's good advice. Don't do it. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. So glad to be a part of the church. So glad he gave us the church. So glad I've spent my whole life building the church. My whole life, all I've done is just been at church. I love it. I love it that my daughter's in church. My son is in church. My wife is in church. Even our dog preached at youth camp. Our dog's in church. My grandson, he can't wait to go to church. See his friends. Bring your kids to church. Stretch your hands toward me here at all the campuses today. I want to pray for you that are sheep. God, I pray for the sheep of your pastor, your holy people. These aren't my people, they're your people. But we're a family. And God, when one of us hurt, all of us hurt. God, I pray for people that are going through a struggle financially, people that are struggling physically, emotionally, in their marriage, in their mind. And God, they know that you'll never leave them, you'll never forsake them. And God, you'll be right there and you've put people in this church that they could get in a group and get around. They could come down front tonight at any of the campuses and the pastors, Pastor Austin, Gabe, and Byron, and there in Florida, and Nia, and Ryan, and Ferguson, and here, Micah, and Joe, and all, all the pastoral team and the prayer team, God, we'll pray for them, we'll hug them, we'll love them. But God, we're not going to do life alone. And God, we're going to support the church, we're going to pray for the church, we're going to love the church, we're going to be at church. And <laughs> the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And God, while we're praying right now, we thank you, Lord, that all the money that we need to build churches are coming to us. I believe that you called us to build 15 churches. So God, we're going to fulfill that great commission to build those 15 churches. And God, I just call right now for the 7 million, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 million on top of the, the money that we we're raising now. The 7 million to do the Fairview Heights campus is coming to us and it'll come in big old whopper chunks, million dollar chunks, $500,000 chunks. They're coming right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that the million and a half dollars that we need to finish up uh, Lake Worth campus, that God, it's just coming to us. We have more money than we know what to do with and God, you're blessing that church, faith church, with the resources to do what we're called to do. We're supposed to have camps for kids and all those kids that were here today for the little kitty camp. God, kids are confused by the school system and by society now, and the world is painting a narrative that is anti-scripture. But God, we're here building a church, letting kids know who they are. So when they're 11, they come up and go, I need an updated picture. I've been here 11 years. God, we're going to raise our kids in church, even when we don't feel like going to church, when we don't feel uh, like we're, we have the energy to go to church, we're going to go and act saved, even when we don't feel say because we're sheep and that's what you told us to do our kids won't do what we say they'll do what we do and so for me and my house we're going to serve the lord at church you said god that the faithful person would abound in blessing and god we're going to abound in blessing and favor and breakthrough at this mighty mighty church because of that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church in jesus name and everybody said amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand. I know you want to clap for that. Jesus is so good. You look so good.